Math class 32, determining the unknown. Seven times what is equal to 28? Matt says seven groups of what equals 28. With that in mind, I'm going to draw an array. I'm going to put seven rows. Those are my groups. I have seven rows here. I'm going to continue to put an X in each row or each group here until I get a total of 28 X's. I'm at 21 now. And there is 28. So I have seven groups and there are four in each group. Seven times four equals 28. 24 divided by four equals what? This says I have 24 total and I'm going to divide that into groups of four or four in a group. I can think of it either way. In this case, I'm going to think of it as four in a group. So I have 24 and I'm dividing it into four items in a group. How many groups will I have? So here is four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and 24. I can do skip counting too, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. I would see that I have six groups of four. So 24 divided by four is six. 45 is equal to nine times what? Nine groups of what is 45? That's what we're really looking at here. So I can again draw an array with nine rows. Those rows are representing my groups. I have nine rows there. And I'm going to continue to put X's in my rows until I get a total of 45 X's. I'm at 27. There's 36. And now 45. And we can see that there's nine groups and there's five in each group. So nine times five is 45. Seven is equal to something divided by six. Well, my related facts for division and multiplication can help me with this problem here. I know that I have a total divided by six, which equals seven. So seven times six should equal that total, which is 42. Seven times six is 42. So seven is equal to 42 divided by six. Two step word problems. Mary had 45 stickers in her collection. She gave 27 to her best friend. Then she received 12 in the mail. How many stickers does Mary have? Well, for the first step, I know the total number of stickers is 45. Mary gave 27 of those to her friend, which means this is what Mary had left. That's the first step that we're trying to figure out. So I'm going to take 45 and subtract 27 that she gave away. Five ones minus seven ones, I need to come over and borrow a 10. Let 10 ones fall out with the five that are here. That's 15 ones minus seven ones is eight ones. Three tens minus two tens is one 10. So this is 18 that she had left. Now we're not finished answering the question because it said then she received 12 in the mail. So we want to take this 18 here that she had left. That's this piece here. Just bringing that down. Okay, and with that 18, we know she got 12 in the mail. And so now the question is what's this total here? That's an addition problem. I'm going to take 12 plus 18. Two ones and eight ones is 10 ones. That's zero ones and the 10 ones can bundle to make a larger unit, a 10 here. One 10, one 10 and one 10 is three tens. So 30 is the total here that she had left. So we can answer the question with a sentence. Mary had 30 stickers. How many stickers does Mary have? So I'm going to say actually Mary has 30 stickers. 
Rounding, round 423 to the nearest 10. I'm going to draw a vertical number line here and show that my number right now is made up of 42 tenths. That's equal to 420 in standard form. If I add a 10 to that, it would be 43 tenths, which in standard form is equal to 430. The midpoint, the number that lies right between 420 and 430 is 425. I will place my number 423 on the vertical number line. And since my number lies below the midpoint, it will round down to 420. Round 423 to the nearest 100. In this case, I'm going to see how many hundreds my number is made up of. Four hundreds in standard form is 400. Add 100 to that, we would have five hundreds. There it is in standard form. The midpoint, the number that lies right between 400 and 400 or 500 is 450. Putting my number 423 on the number line, I can see that it lies below the midpoint, so it will round down. Anytime my number lies below the midpoint, it rounds down. If it's to lie on or above the midpoint, it rounds up. Number line partitioning. Partition each hole into two equal pieces and label each partition. Well, the whole is from zero to one. If I want to partition that into two equal pieces, I'm going to split that right in half there. One to two is another whole. To partition that into two equal pieces, we'll split that whole right there in half. So I have zero halves, one half, two halves is the same thing as one whole. This would be three halves or one whole and one half towards another hole, and then two halves is the same thing, or two holes is the same thing as four halves. Comparing fractions. Compare the fractions using greater than, less than, or equal. Justify using the fraction models. One half versus one sixth. One half, the units is halves. That means two equal pieces is what the whole is broken into. One of those pieces is shaded. One sixth. My units are sixths. So each hole is broken into six equal pieces and one of those six is shaded. So I can see that one half is greater than one sixth. Here we're given the same number of units. We have one unit in each hole, but what we're really comparing is the size of those units. Okay? The smaller the denominator, the less pieces that the whole is broken into, so the greater the pieces are. Here I have two-fourths versus three-fourths. Notice that I have common units this time. Both of my holes will be broken into fourths. In other words, four equal pieces. So the units are the same size. What I'm really comparing here is the numerators, which tells me the number of units I have. So I have two of my fourths versus three of my fourths. And two fourths is less than three fourths. Next we have elapsed time. Write the time shown on each clock. Here, I can see the hour hand. When I'm telling time, I want to look at the short hand first. That helps with the hour. It is past the one, but not to the two. So we're still in the one o'clock hour. And then I look at the long hand to determine the minutes. Every dot on the clock here is one minute. Or I know that each number on the clock is a five minute jump here. So we can start at the top at o'clock and go five, 10, 15, 20, 25. It is one twenty-five. Let's call that p.m. here. And then I look here at the end time. Again, I'm going to look at the shorthand first to determine the hour. It is right past the four, but not quite to the five yet, so we're still in the four o'clock hour. And determine the minutes, I'll look at the long hand, and I'm gonna count by fives starting at o'clock, five, 10, 15 minutes past four o'clock. 4, 15, and again, we're calling this p.m. So how much time has elapsed from the start to end? 125 to 415. 
I am going to start at 125 to get to the next hour, which would be two o'clock. I see that I would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes, right? So we're adding on 35 minutes. Now, to get from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, I'm adding on 2 hours. Now, I'm not at my end time yet. I want to get to 4.15. So to get to 4.15, we're adding on 15 more minutes. Now I can add up all the parts here. I have 35 minutes and 15 minutes, which is 50 minutes, and I have two hours. So two hours and 50 minutes is the elapsed time. Area, tiling. Find the area of the rectangle by tiling it. To tile the rectangle, we are simply going to finish putting the square units inside of that large rectangle. So I'll finish drawing the columns, and now I'm going to continue to draw the rows over. And I can count all of my squares, and I will find that inside of that large rectangle there is a total of 42 squares, so the area is equal to 42 square units. Now I could go a step further and look at that in terms of rows. I have six rows, and in terms of columns, I have seven columns. And I know that area for rectangles is equal to the length times width. So the area here is equal to six times seven, and so that, again, is 42. And we call area square units. We don't know the units here, so we're gonna just call it units, but they are always squared. Shape attributes. Check all that apply for the given shape. A quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. This definitely has four sides, so we will check that. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. I notice this side and this side are parallel. They will never touch, no matter how far extended. This side and this side are also parallel. No matter how far we extend those, they will never touch each other. They will never intersect or meet. So this shape is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides. A rectangle is a quadrilateral that has four right angles. I see two obtuse angles and two acute angles no right angles, so this is not a rectangle. A rhombus has four equal sides. I can easily see here that these two sides are longer than these two sides, so it is not a rhombus. And a square has to be a rectangle and a rhombus. A square is a four right angle and four equal side quadrilateral. Therefore, it's not a square because it was not a rectangle and rhombus, so the most specific name is a parallelogram here.